All right, uh, so this will be a shorter video, but there was this quote I read the other day, and it, it kind of clicked with me, and I'm actually going to amend the quote a little bit, but it, to, to, to just read the original quote, it, it, it says that reading is food for intelligence, and writing is exercise. So what this does is it kind of makes an analogy between reading and eating, and it makes an analogy between writing and exercise. What that essentially means is that reading is taking in information in the same way that eating is taking in energy, right? And in that same light, writing is effectively using the information that you have consumed, and exercise is using the food that you have consumed, right? Now, my amendment to this to this uh, this quote is is as a little detail, but basically this it's that reading and writing are to a healthy mind what food and exercise are to a healthy body so it, it's a similar quote but I, I think what, what i've done here is highlighted mental health and physical health i've highlighted di the dichotomy between mental and physical health and how we can perhaps find mental and physical health right so there's a couple of dynamics to consider when we try to find that mental and physical health. The first is that mental health is dependent on a, a balance between our reading and writing. It's it dependent on a balance between taking information in and using that information, whether teaching it to other people or by using it to come up with new ideas and to find new patterns within that information. We need to find a balance between reading and writing. And reading, it doesn't have to be physically reading. It could be learning in any form. And writing could be teaching or coming up with new ideas in any form. If we don't consider this dynamic, then we may become kind of imbalanced. We may become people who are followers, who don't come up with original thoughts. And we are effectively brainwashed by whoever we are listening to, right? Or whoever we are reading, uh, whoever's uh, material we are reading, right? And the same concept applies to the healthy mind, right? So it, it, we need a balance between diet and exercise. If you put all of your effort into improving your diet, but you never exercise, you're not going to be healthy. Likewise, if you run a marathon a day, but you're eating like crap, you're not going to be healthy. There, the point is that you have to, again, you have to balance, find a balance between diet and exercise. You have to find a balance between the food you're eating and the way that you're expelling that energy. Exercise improves your body's capacity to, to basically use the nutrients you consume. So you can't just eat a healthy diet and sit on the couch and expect to be healthy. So there is another dynamic to consider here. And it's the quality of the diet, whether it's that information diet or whether it is the the nutritional diet, right? You have to consider that the quality and not just the quality, but the, the diversity as well. So if you're in an echo chamber and you're consuming uh, information from one person or from one source, that's not a very diverse diet, right? And what that's going to do is it's going to, you're going to miss things. You're going to leave out a good portion of the information, right? The same goes with the diet. If you're only eating one food, you're going to miss out on a bunch of micronutrients. The micronutrients are akin to the nuance in the different viewpoints that you might get from a very, from a variety of informational sources of information, right? You have to diversify the information and you have to diversify your diet, right? And you also want to improve the quality, right? You want to make sure you are taking in quality information and quality food, okay? It checks out. And if you don't do that, well, then you're going to, again, you're going to miss things. I could make an analogy to the stock market. There's a reason why people diversify their their investments, right? If you put all your eggs in one basket, if you put all your investments in one company and that company tanks, well, you're, you're down shit's creek, right? The same applies to, again, the, that information diet and the nutritional diet. And there's one last uh, dynamic to consider here. And it is actually the relationship between mental and physical health themselves. So you can focus all of your effort on your mental health and let your physical health suffer. 
but your physical health feeds into your mental health and probably vice versa, right? Your mental health feeds into your physical health. So if you have, if you're listening to bad information and people are telling you to eat junk food, that's bad information. That's going to feed into your physical health, right? Because you're now going to believe that processed foods are healthy for you and you're going to eat junk food and you're going to become physically unhealthy. Likewise, if you are not eating a variety of food, you're not eating healthy food, you're probably going to be mentally unhealthy as well. The point here is that causation kind of works in both directions here. A, a, poor, a phys poor physical health can lead to poor mental health, and poor mental health can lead to poor physical health. So the solution in this case is to kind of fire on all cylinders. We have to diversify our information diet. We have to diversify our nutritional diet. We have to ensure that we are taking in quality information and quality food. And then we have to do the work. We have to exercise and we have to write, right? Or write, we have to teach. We have to think about the information we've taken in and look for new patterns within that information, right? When you do this, when you fire on all cylinders like this, you become healthy physically and mentally. And this is a little off topic perhaps, but I believe that physical and mental health are what leads to spiritual health. If you're not mentally healthy or depressed, you probably aren't going to be spiritually healthy. If you're physically unhealthy, you're probably not going to be spiritually healthy. Whether or not you're religious or you consider yourself spiritual, or, or maybe if you're not religious, maybe you're an atheist, spiritual health is kind of just defined as like the way you feel about your, you, you, yourself and, and the world around you. Spiritual health is defined probably pretty accurately as optimism, and a lack of spiritual health is defined as pessimism, right? If you want to be spiritually healthy, if you want to be optimistic, you need to improve, again, that information diet, the quality and diversity of that information diet. You need to listen to the opposing viewpoints that you might not like, and you need to look for patterns within that information diet to come up with new ideas that perhaps challenge and, and come up with solutions to the problems that you see in the world. And likewise, you have to, again, diversify the quality or diversify and find and improve the quality of your nutritional diet and then exercise, right? If you do those four things, again, improve your, your, your information and nutritional diet, exercise, and write or think about the information that you've taken in. You're going to become a mentally and physically healthy person and probably by extension spiritually healthy. So give it a little thought. Thanks for watching.